realise you've got a problem with alcohol and you feel like you're caught in a trap and you're drinking every day, it can seem really hard knowing what to do, what to, steps to take for the best. I know that's exactly how I felt and I thought I could never get out of the trap. So I want to share with you 10 tips that I put together to help you free yourself from alcohol. Um, some of them might work really well for you. Some of them you might think are a bit wild and wacky and might not be what you want to do. But you know, take, take note of them all and see how they are for you and whether they work. The first thing is all about changing your mindset. I've written these down, so excuse me if I just sort of look to the screen for a second. Change your mindset. You need to get from a place where you feel like you're deprived and you can't have a drink to a place where you feel like you just don't want a drink, where alcohol becomes insignificant and unimportant in your life. The way that I did that was by reading sober books, This Naked Mind by Annie Grace, The Sober Diaries by Claire Pooley, Alcohol Explained by William Porter. They're all really good books. And of course, my own book, The Sober Survival Guide, that's full of tactics and tips and stories about when I was drinking and how I moved from drinking two or three bottles of red wine a day to freeing myself from alcohol. So educating yourself using those sort of tools are absolutely amazing. So that's my first tip is reading sober books and expanding your knowledge. My second tip would be to sign up for the alcoholexperiment.com, which is run by Annie Grace, who wrote This Naked Mind. It holds your hand through the first 30 days of sobriety. There's an online journal. There's kind of homework and um, tools that you can use in there. And, and you can just check in every day with that and you can make use of it and you can kind of lean on it as your friend and an arm around the shoulder on your journey. And you don't have to quit right away. You can work your way through it and then you can make a commitment to stop drinking at a point that feels right for you. So my third tip would be to join some Facebook sober groups. This gives you access to an amazing level of support. You can join private communities where you can connect with people who are on the exact same journey as you. Some people might have been sober for a long time. Some people might be on day one or not even quit drinking yet. Not only can you help those people by sharing your own experiences, you can learn and you can grow stronger from from their experiences as well. The Be Sober Facebook group is amazing. It's got nearly 7,000 members in there. It's one of the fastest growing online sober communities. So I definitely recommend checking that out. Um, all, all, well, our sober group, Be Sober, is completely private. And nearly all of the ones that I know about are also private. And what that means is that only people in the group can see that you're a member and can see what you post. So you don't have to worry about your friends finding out that you're in this group or seeing anything that you post in there. My, my next tip, tip number four, would be to arm yourself with plenty of zero alcohol alternative drinks. I used to drink in the evenings red wine every single night uh, and I found that I wanted to fill that void. I still wanted to have a grown-up drink in an adult glass, a nice chunky glass that still felt like I was having something special but I just didn't want the alcohol. Um, so I found things like uh, Barago which is a botanical drink you can mix with tonic water. Caleno is another one that I really enjoy. And also you've got things like Seed Lip and Cedars as well, which is an, another good one. Um, we're pretty lucky here in the UK. There seem to be more available in the UK than the US and the rest of the world. But Amazon is your friend. You can get a lot of this stuff on Amazon. Um, and these, and it, it's part of the fun, checking out these new drinks and exploring the tastes and seeing what's what you like, what you don't like, and mixing up something new and exciting. And I really look forward to those drinks, and I soon forgot that there was no alcohol in them. Tip number five is pretty simple. Get rid of all the alcohol in the house. I put all my red wine outside in a box with a sign on it that said free to a good home. Within about 15 minutes it had all gone and I actually had someone knocking on the door asking if I had any more of it. And it was a really empowering feeling 
getting rid of that. It felt like I'd got closure and I'd drawn a line under it. So I would recommend not leaving yourself open to temptation and getting rid of any alcoholic drinks that you have in the house. The next one um, would be avoiding temptation, tip, tip number six. So for the first few weeks after I quit, I made a conscious effort not to go anywhere where I might be tempted to drink, whether that was to the pub or evenings out with friends who I knew the relationships were mainly based around alcohol, I avoided them. Now that was my personal choice and I'm not saying you have to do that. You might feel really strong and you might feel ready for it. But for me, it, it took about four or five weeks before I felt strong enough to get out there and go to places where I knew that alcohol would be, be flowing. And you can kind of test yourself and start feeling yeah, are, are you liberated or are you still fixated with alcohol? And if you still feel you're a bit fixated with it, it's probably not a good idea to be putting yourself in a position where there's going to be lots of booze around you. Tip number seven, get really passionate and excited about this. The benefits of an alcohol-free life are amazing and it's so important to remember what you're gaining you're not losing anything. You're going to gain in terms of your health, both your mental health and your actual physical well-being. And you're going to gain in so many other ways. Your relationships are going to improve. Your sense of happiness and well-being is going to improve. And after a period of time, you just won't miss the drink, the alcohol drink, that is. So th try and get excited about what's happening. It can be tough in the first few weeks. There's no denying it. But if you approach it with a sense of excitement about all the things you're going to gain, the journey becomes so much easier. Annie Grace, the author of This Naked Mind, says that your expectations will shape your experience. So if you go into an alcohol-free life thinking that it's going to be all de deprivation and doom and gloom, that's probably what it will feel like for you. Whereas if you come at it thinking that this is going to be amazing, you're going to experience a wonderful journey of self-improvement and growth, then that's what will happen for you. If you look at people who are uh, vegans, for example, or, or people who are vegetarian, you know, they, they're really passionate about what they do. They don't have a sense of deprivation. They're proud of it, excited about it. So you just need to be the liquid version of vegan. Um, which is sober. Sober is a lifestyle and it, it's an exciting and amazing journey that you go on and it's definitely worth getting excited about. Tip number eight is not to worry if you have a slip up. Nobody was perfect at anything the very first time they tried to do it. If you look at a top sportsman like um, in tennis, say Roger Federer, for example, he wasn't perfect the first time he picked up a tennis racket. It took practice and practice and practice for him to get to the top of his game. And quitting drinking is a little bit like learning a new skill. You're not going to be perfect at it first time round. So definitely don't beat yourself up if you do have a drink or have a slip up on the journey. The most important thing is to use those slip ups as learning opportunities. So if you have a drink and you didn't want one, get your journal out, write it down, explore what it was that triggered you to have a drink, how you felt when you were having a drink, how you felt after you had a drink and really delve into it and get curious and learn from it and make yourself stronger for next time around. And that's how you grow and you develop and you can be stronger and stronger as you go further and further on this journey. But don't expect perfection the first time around. It took me so many attempts just to get through the first day of drinking. And I had tears, I had emotional meltdowns. It really took some doing to get there, but I did get there. I kept doing the work and I kept expanding my knowledge and I kept learning from the slip ups. So tip number eight is an important one. Don't beat yourself up and no negative self-talk. Tip number nine is to stay engaged and journal everything. And what I mean by staying engaged is checking in with those sober groups, connecting with people, talking it out with people, sharing your feelings and journaling it, writing it down is so, so important. Getting your feelings and emotions down on paper so that you can really get curious about them dig into the information and really start learning more about yourself and realising that actually you're turning into the person that you want to be and you can 
you can see your wins, you can see your victories as you start moving forward. That journal is probably the most important tool on your, on your route to alcohol freedom. I'd also urge you to take a selfie. So early in the process when you want to quit drinking, take a selfie and then take another one after 30 days and another one maybe after 60 or 90 days. You will be amazed at the difference. You can look on the Be Sober website where I've shared a few of mine. My face was bloated that it's not anymore. I had darkness under my eyes, red blotchy skin, all of these things have changed. And, and if you can see that that's happening on the outside, just imagine what's going on on the inside. Tip number 10 would be to think about what you're gonna do with all this extra time you've got on your hands. And as well as extra time, you're gonna be more motivated, you're gonna have more energy. So start thinking about the things that you wanna do. And again, get your journal out and write this down. There might be new hobbies you wanna try or new experiences. Um, I wrote a sober bucket list and I've been slowly ticking things off of that that I wanted to do. Um, and the, the world's your oyster, you know, get outside and start enjoying new things. I actually added up how much time I was spending drinking every week and it was a ridiculous amount of time and you know it freed up 15 20 hours or more every single week where I had nothing to do with my time any longer and I found myself going to the gym more often running more often joined a boot camp and made a bunch of new friends there and obviously fitness is something that I enjoy but we all enjoy different things so whatever it is for you you might want to join a book club or you might want to go and join something else that involves nature or crafts whatever it is for you there's so many ideas and if you're stuck for ideas you can google it because there's tons and tons of suggestions out there so they're my 10 tips as a start point for you to really set yourself up for success on your sober journey. And if there's anything you're not sure about or you feel a little bit stuck putting together a plan, just reach out to me. You can email me through the Be Sober website. I'm always in the Be Sober Facebook group if you want to tag me in anything. I'm here to help and I want to make sure you succeed on this journey to quitting drinking.